Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're sort of going to address one of the frequent comments we have seen across our videos on the RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti so far. As you already know, we said in our reviews of those cards that the RTX 2080 is particularly poor value right now as it offers, you know, GTX 1080 Ti-like performance at a higher price, making it pretty useless. While the RTX 2080 Ti, it is the fastest card on the market, but it's even worse value thanks to more than an 80% price premium over the 2080 Ti for only around 30% more performance on average. But the question or even just blanket statement we keep seeing pop up relates to DLSS. We keep seeing comments like, it's worth buying the RTX 2080 for DLSS or DLSS is the killer feature for these RTX cards. Well today, we're doing an early investigation into DLSS to see whether it actually could be the reason to buy an RTX 2080 or RTX 2080 Ti using the current DLSS demos we have available. I'm going to comment a bit more on this after the quality demonstrations, but we weren't originally going to cover DLSS so soon because there are only two NVIDIA provided demos right now that allow us to use DLSS in action. Neither of them are actual games, instead they are CAN benchmarks, so it's not really the best way to explore and analyze DLSS, but we are seeing a lot of talk about the tech, so I think it warrants an early investigation anyway. So if you're not familiar with DLSS, it stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it's a new rendering technology that only works with NVIDIA's GeForce RTX graphics cards. There are two DLSS modes, but we can only test one of them right now, the standard DLSS mode, so it's the one we'll be focusing on. While the name does have super sampling in it, the standard DLSS mode isn't really super sampling. It's more an image reconstruction technique that renders a game at a sub-native resolution, then uses AI inferencing to upscale and improve the image. And of course, the AI processing element of DLSS is only possible thanks to Turing's tensor cores. So what DLSS aims to provide is a 4K image equivalent to a native 4K presentation except with higher performance than you'd otherwise get through native rendering. This is possible because at 4K, DLSS is actually rendering the game at approximately 1440p, so with two times fewer samples, and then upscaling it using an AI network trained on a 64 times super sample anti-aliased reference image. You could think of it as an advanced upscaling technology similar to checkerboard rendering or temporal rendering techniques game consoles like the PS4 Pro use to render games at 4K, while actually rendering them at lower resolutions. Theoretically, DLSS fixes a lot of the issues with checkerboard rendering, making it more suitable for PC gaming where the artifacts generated through checkerboarding are much more noticeable. Anyway, let's get into some actual quality comparisons and we'll start with the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. I recommend watching this video at YouTube's maximum 4K quality or alternatively downloading the source quality file from our Patreon page if you are a Patreon member. First up, we have a direct comparison of native 4K with temporal anti-aliasing or TAA up against DLSS at 4K. It's an interesting comparison to make because in some situations, DLSS provides superior image quality to the native 4K TAA presentation, such as with distant trees in some motion shots. However, for the most part, the 4K TAA image is better, giving you improved fine detail in a lot of the various scenes, particularly the car at the beginning of the benchmark run, uh, the grass a bit later on, and the close-up food shot towards the end. The differences in quality range anywhere from very hard to spot to quite noticeable on a 4K display. It seems that DLSS struggles with a lot of fine, high-resolution texture work that the native image provides, especially in more static shots. However, as DLSS doesn't have a temporal component, this reconstruction technique finds it easy to clean up moving shots where TAA either blurs the image or introduces artifacts, which is why in some aspects it is superior. DLSS, at least in this benchmark, is pretty close to the native 4K presentation, but it's definitely not the same as native 4K, and those with high resolution displays will be missing out on the extra detail you get with a true native presentation. Of course, DLSS versus 4K TAA is the stock standard comparison Nvidia suggests, so I decided to look at a few other comparisons, starting with DLSS versus a 4K image with no anti-aliasing. Of course, right away you'll spot a ton of aliasing artifacts on the 4K no AA image, which is to be expected, and I wouldn't suggest people play with AA disabled. It's especially bad on, you know, the character's hair and grass. 
But the NoAA image does produce noticeably sharper and clearer texture quality when you look at, say, the middle of an object where there are a few jaggies or artifacts. Distant tree quality as well has now improved to the point where the NoAA presentation is equivalent to DLSS rather than inferior to DLSS. And this begins to highlight one of the key issues with Final Fantasy XV's anti-aliasing techniques. They're rubbish. The TAA implementation in this game is terrible. It's most comparable to a blur filter rather than a decent AA implementation that preserves fine detail while smoothing out edges and removing shimmering. Enabling TAA in the game simply wipes out a lot of the fine texture detail you'd otherwise get at 4K and completely destroys scenes during motion. I'm not the biggest fan of TAA in most games, but it is possible to get right. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, is a game with decent TAA that softens edges without significantly reducing texture quality. But in this particular game, TAA, well, it, it sucks, to be honest. Uh, because Final Fantasy XV's TAA is so bad, the game isn't a great comparison between a native 4K image and DLSS. A lot of games use far better anti-aliasing techniques, either with better TAA or techniques like SMAA or a combination of both. So it's all well and good to say DLSS looks pretty close to Final Fantasy XV's native 4K TAA presentation, but how well will it compare to a majority of games with better anti-aliasing and better native 4K? Well, it's hard to say for certain, but I'd certainly expect the gap in image quality to widen. That's not to say DLSS is going to be a bust. There's certainly a place for a rendering technique that provides better performance for a small reduction in image quality. After all, we already have quality settings for a whole range of other effects. But I don't think the Final Fantasy XV demo is great for judging that exact quality reduction for most games. There is one very nice thing to highlight. 4K DLSS is far superior to a native 1440p presentation. As you might recall, DLSS is upscaling from 1440p to try and imitate 4K. While at a native 1440p, textures and fine detail are noticeably blurrier when upscaling that image to 4K ourselves, whereas using DLSS for upscaling, it's kind of like a magic filter that cleans up everything. Even applying a sharpening filter using reshade to try and, I guess, cheat a bit and clean up the blurry 1440p TAA image, it's still not as clean as the DLSS image, though it is better than the regular non-sharpened 1440p presentation. In terms of performance, well, DLSS isn't a free anti-aliasing or upscaling technique, so you're not going to get 1440p class performance while getting a near 4K presentation. For our benchmark runs of Final Fantasy XV's benchmark, DLSS improved performance by 34% looking at average frame rates and 27% looking at 1% lows. However, that is compared to a native 4K. Running at a native 1440p improved things again, producing a 26% higher average frame rate compared to 4K DLSS. And I think that's a reasonable reflection of how the visual quality stacks up. DLSS is a middle ground between native 1440p and native 4K, though DLSS is closer to 4K in terms of quality. So of these three options, I think it, it could deliver the best balance between performance and visuals. For those that are less likely to notice the quality reduction compared to native 4K, DLSS could be the way to go. But again, this is only looking from uh, one game, and we have to wait for actual playable games to see how it stacks up in a more real-world usage scenario. The other demo, and perhaps the more interesting of the two demos we can currently test DLSS in, is Epic's Infiltrator. It's a pretty similar story when comparing DLSS to 4K TAA, except in this demo the TAA implementation isn't complete garbage. DLSS does clean up a few of the temporal artifacts that TAA introduces, However, the 4K TAA image is sharper and clearer throughout the run, and it's particularly noticeable during the slower panning sections. It's not a bad effort from DLSS considering it's working with a 1440p source. It does get pretty close to a native 4K, and in a lot of scenes I found it pretty hard to spot any differences. However, native 4K is that little bit sharper, so I wouldn't call the two images completely comparable. Again, comparing 1440p to 4K DLSS does show DLSS to be quite a bit better in terms of its clarity and overall visual quality, so DLSS is once again working some black magic to upscale the image significantly above the source 1440p material. However, this is perhaps the most interesting comparison in this video. The Infiltrator demo allows you to mess around with the resolutions a bit more than Final Fantasy XV. So here I have a native 1800p image upscaled to 4K next to 4 4K DLSS. This is a serious battle. In some situations I noticed fewer jagged edges with the upscaled 1800p image, and in some situations I noticed higher detail with the DLSS imagery. 
it's an incredibly close comparison where native 4K was that little bit sharper than DLSS, 1800p is a very good match for DLSS. And here's the fun part, native 1800p rendering delivers nearly identical performance to DLSS in the Infiltrator demo. DLSS is about 2% faster in average frame rates and 6% faster in 1% lows. Of course, DLSS is a good 37% faster than 4K in average frame rates, but the key thing here is DLSS is nearly identical visually to 1800p while also providing near identical performance. Just before I jump into the conclusion, I wanted to briefly touch on DLSS at 1440p, which is the lowest supported resolution for DLSS. Here DLSS is sampling the game at 1080p, then upscaling, and I think a lot of what I said about 4K DLSS versus 4K TAA holds up here as well. If anything, the difference in clarity is a bit more pronounced at this resolution in favour of native 1440p. I believe the demo is also CPU limited here with a 2080 Ti and an overclocked 8700K, so there's not much point talking about performance. So there's a few interesting takeaways here from this early look at DLSS, but let's first start with the limitations. We only have two demos to go on, neither of which are games we can jump in and freely play. Instead, they are fully canned on the Rails benchmarks, and it could be easier for Nvidia to optimize their AI network used with DLSS for these canned scenarios rather than for a dynamic game. So what we're seeing here could be DLSS image quality that is better than in real world games. It's also a pretty small sample size. Final Fantasy XV is a particularly poor comparison because its stock standard anti-aliasing TAA in this case is a rubbish implementation of that technology, which blurs the otherwise sharp, clear imagery you normally get with native 4K. And while Infiltrator isn't as limited in that regard, it's not an actual game. Nvidia also provided these benchmarks in a way that makes it very difficult to test anything other than the resolutions and quality settings they want us to use. Both demos are launched using batch files with pretty much everything locked down, which is why you might have only seen DLSS versus 4K TAA comparisons up to this point. I'd have loved to pit DLSS up against better anti-aliasing techniques, but it just wasn't possible. On face value, you look at the 4K TAA versus DLSS comparisons, and it's hard not to be impressed. DLSS does provide pretty similar visual quality to native 4K. It's not quite as good, but it's close, all while giving you around 30 to 35% more performance. And compared to native 1440p, which DLSS uses for its AI enhanced image reconstruction, this form of upscaling looks like black magic. But dig a little deeper, and at least using the Infiltrator demo, DLSS is pretty similar in terms of both visual quality and performance to running the game at 1800p and then upscaling the image to 4K. Again, it's just one demo and not a real game, but pouring over the footage and performance data really tempered my expectations for what to expect when DLSS comes to real world games. After all, anyone with an older GPU, say a Pascal based 1080 Ti, could simply run games at 1800p and get similar performance and visual quality to DLSS on an RTX 2080. That is, if real-world in-game implementations of DLSS are similar to what we saw in Infiltrator. This is partly why I didn't want to explore DLSS fully until we had more tools at our disposal. We still don't know how DLSS compares to different anti-aliasing techniques, or whether running at something like 1800p with a super low-cost form of anti-aliasing would deliver better results than DLSS. Without proper integration in real-world games, it's simply too early to say for sure, but going what I've seen so far, I don't think DLSS is as revolutionary or as important as NVIDIA are making out. So as it stands right now with zero real world games to use with DLSS, I have to say I haven't seen anything to suggest DLSS is a good reason to upgrade to an RTX graphics card or that the performance uplift from DLSS justifies the crazy high prices for RTX cards. And the list of games that will support DLSS isn't exactly filled with all the hottest upcoming titles either. There are some big games in there, but there will be plenty as well that don't support DLSS. We will be revisiting DLSS when we can play some actual games that integrate it. Don't know when that will be, but hopefully soon enough. Otherwise, that just about does it for this early investigation into DLSS. Subscribe for more videos like this one, hit that like button if you like the video, and consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat and I'll catch you in the next one.